Hi, I'm Steve Hassan, and I'm pleased to have David Weissman with me um, today. David, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, and I understand you're in school. Good That's for you. That's correct. Me too. <laughs> At age 65. So, David, we had talked um, a whole bunch of months ago. Um, I read um, about you self-proclaiming that you were a, a MAGA troll and that you were a, a, a absolute, you know, Trump devotee and and uh, worked very hard online to promote the president's point of view. And you told me a, a, a little bit about your story and your background, and I included you in the Cult of Trump book, which uh, is on, on its way to you. I hope you like it. Uh, but I talked about you and I talked about Sarah Silverman and you yourself described um, you know, uh, experience of having a celebrity uh, treat you with respect and, and listen to you and ask you questions that helped you to, to start reevaluating everything that you had believed to that point. Am I, am I speaking accurately? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, yes, sir, you're speaking very accurately. Um, so you're, you're well on point and on the mark. And uh, so yeah, very accurate. So let me just fill in a little bit more of what I remember, and then I'll ask, mm -hmm. ask you to, to talk some more. My recollection is that you are a, a military veteran, Correct. Uh, that you're also Jewish, that yep. you are a, uh, a dual citizen with Israel. You actually lived in Israel for a number of years, I think five years, and that you blog for the Times of Israel um, mm. as well. And um, yeah, and, and I'm also following you in terms of um, your tweets. I know uh, you have almost 100,000 followers now. That's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, I'm, I've been blessed with that. You know, even with the ups and downs of my journey, you know, it's amazing that, uh, that you know, they, the followers still, still support me with everything. So I'm lucky. Yeah, no, it's great. But honestly, you're, you're a unique human being in that most people, when they come to realize, you know what, what I've been believing and what I've been doing is not what I thought it was, and that I need to, you know, change paths, unlike most people who just kind of sneak away and never uh, are public about it, you, you are bold and courageous. And I think that's partly why you have so many followers because they admire your courage and, and, and really are interested to hear uh, how you kind of came to change your, your mind because uh, so many people are asking, what, what can we do to help other people to step back and to you know, start reevaluating? And I wondered if you would share. What sure. You Oh, um, well, as I mentioned before, um, you know, in the conversation that I had with Sarah, uh, she, you know, she had no intention of converting me. Um, you know, she respected who I was and who I supported and what I believed in at the time. You know, all she was doing was just answering questions and was kind about it, even though I wasn't originally kind. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, throughout this process, you know, there were other people that were getting involved as well. So it was sort of like an like an intervention in a way um, with many different people, uh, you know, talking to me and educating me on issues and uh, people and, you know, realizing, you know, all that crap that I used to believe was like all propaganda and, you know, lies and it was all agenda specific. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was learning that, you know, just kindness, patience and, you know, people didn't expect me to change right away. They were just informing me and they were showing me facts. And, um, and, and a lot of these facts were undeniable. I mean, you, you know, it's like, holy crap, you know, I've been alive for so many years, you know. And right. And so, so it's, like I said, I, I tell people it takes patience, kindness, and facts. And, and I actually, you know, I was in the Moonies and I've been helping people to uh, reevaluate and get out of all types of different cult groups. And what I've learned over the decades is that people treating 
members with respect, with compassion, with curiosity, no judgment, nice. not trying to win an argument or prove you know, that they're wrong, but just engaging on a very personal human level and asking good questions um, that is thought provoking and hopefully engaging the getting the, the other person curious to find out for themselves. Right. And the thing is, people a lot, a lot find themselves, um, they, a lot of them don't mean to do good. Um, they blame they aren't doing good for the country and they're, they're doing good for um, their you know, families and friends because, you know, they're led to believe that, you know, their rights are being taken away, that, you know, they're losing their freedoms, you know, their lives are in danger by stuff that's unknown. So, and people, you know, they fear and hate what they don't understand, so. Right. Um, and, you know, this cult mentality was actually before Trump uh, became president, you know, and um, he was like the antidote of um, what they all believed in, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I tell people, you know, if he gets impeached or if he gets reelected, you know, he doesn't get elected, and nothing is done about um, how this misinformation um, they're just going to elect somebody just like him and so people need to realize that that it's not going to start with Trump it's ended with Trump but you know it was, it was there before right exactly so um, you know my work is to empower people to think for themselves to encourage them to think you know and not just accept whatever they're told, but l gather information from other points of view. Look at the sources of that information. Is it credible? Is it not credible? Uh, to, to turn it over in your own mind and in your own heart based on your own experiences. But don't get into a silo where you're only looking for confirmation information and, and dissing everything else. Right. It's part of the pattern that I see going on where where everyone else is the enemy of the people and, and fake news and don't believe anything that anyone who's critical has to say. And that just is not uh, part of the American spirit or the desire to be free, I think. Exactly. And, and you kind of look at it all points of view, you know, from people with different backgrounds and so one of the things I've learned in this process that, you know, people of different race, colors, gender, I mean, all have different walks of life and can't just, you know, there's no one American culture, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, just realize that. And you gotta, and, 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 um, gotta, you know, respect people for who they are. I mean, even Trump supporters sometimes. And I, I, I know I've kind of come back on going after them, even though, because I realize that a lot of it is not their fault too. So right. that's that's why I, I'm sort of targeting, you know, the people who are causing the problems. You know, I, I changed my um, accountability, you know, with people who are spreading the misinformation or the politicians themselves. Uh-huh, yeah. So I'm wondering if you could share, first of all, have you heard from other people who, like you, had been um, fervent? Trump supporters who've, who've exited? Not many. Um, I mean, there is a page called Trump Regrets, and people have talked about why they left, but um, you don't see it as much as I do, like as much as I talk about it. But I mean, so. Trump I, 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 Regrets? Is that what you yeah. said? I'll look it up. Yeah, it's an actual, it's an actual Twitter account page um, where people I say, I regret. So, I mean, I know I'm not the only one, that's for sure, um, but um, I'm hoping there's more more out there. So. Oh, for sure. I, 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 I know a bunch of people. Interestingly, there, there are people who were either born into cults or were recruited into cults, and they never understood mind control, and, and a bunch of them got swept up in voting for Trump and believing in Trump and then came to realize, oh, he's a liar, uh, right. he's not trustworthy. Uh, and so, and, and a lot of their family and friends were very angry with them that they voted for Trump. And, and that was creating social pressure 
on them as well. Um, but would you mind, you know, uh, recounting some of the things, if you think back to your mindset as a believer, what were some of the critical points that you felt were, you know, sort of said to you or questions that came up that made you uh, take it, ser you know, another point of view seriously? Well, uh, it came through the dialogue of learning a lot. I was told what liberals believe in compared to what liberals actually believe in things like gun control or immigrants learning like hey you know it was progressive so progressive don't really want to take guns away i mean there are there are some but you know every, there's uh, the democratic party is so diverse with so many different people with so many mm -hmm. different missions and you know i mean most people just want like common sense laws and i realized like wait a minute they don't want to take our guns away you know and mm -hmm. And, and that's a line that conservative pundits, you know, repeatedly have said, like, hey, they want to take all your guns. Um, also, immigrants, you know, learn about uh, seeking asylum, um, different human rights that conservative pundits send them out. Mm -hmm. So, like, as I'm learning, like, hey, conservatives are wrong about this, they're wrong about this. And, you know, when I had the backlashes from my former teammates, um, I kind of like, wait a minute, and then I see how Trump does it. And I was like, thinking, you know what, if they're wrong about, you know, issues and, you know, Obama and Clinton, you know, Democrats, it's possible they're wrong about Trump too. Mm -hmm. So I'm done research more about Trump, you know, Todd the draft five times. He wasn't as successful a businessman as they make him out to me. Right. You know, he's always not this uh, Captain America type person that was portrayed uh, that cared about America. You know, he's completely opposite and and like when i and i realized and this is not the guy who i voted for you know i voted for somebody else with a trump name to it and you know i and i and internally i went back and forth back and forth you know because it was it was an eye opener and you mean you know your whole world sort of turned upside down believing what you believe for so many years turning out to be false right I mean, even the tweets don't really do its justice of what i uh I mean, I know I'm not the only person that went from Republican to Democrat, but um, I mean, it's my own journey that I went through, and it's, and it's been amazing. And um, so, yeah, and, well, like what really confronted me with me was that meeting with Putin. You know, like, what kind of president leaves himself vulnerable to be recorded by our by our nemesis? You know, I mean, like well, that's sad. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, private meeting, closed doors, and our enemy records what they said. I mean. So and do you then, think you know, being a, a military man helped you a little bit to have a frame that Putin was not an, an, a, a friend of America, an American? Yeah, democracy? I mean, definitely, for sure. I mean, he was always not trustworthy, and you saw that with both sides. Um, I mean, someone that you should not trust, uh, and definitely does not have the best interest for America. He has his own agenda. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure, being in the military, and the part, well, part of the propaganda that I used to believe in, they would take sound bites. Because you remember in the time where President Obama um, had met with a, a Russian ambassador and told him, you know, him flexibility, you know, a lot of conservatives saying, oh, what about that? What about that? But if you actually went outside the propaganda bubble, you actually see that he's talking about, like, you know, after his campaign, um, and come more flexibility flexibility on the treaties that they were working on together. There was no sinister um sorry, your molding like, you know, the right was making it out to me. Right. So I mean, yeah, I mean someone like Clinton was always sort of like, you know, he was you know, not a bad guy, but it's the propaganda around the, of our own political opponents that we need to watch out for. Yeah. And and even now, even now, I I don't always go by what liberal pundits say. I mean you know, when they talk about Trump's impeachment inquiry, I go to the transcripts. I read the transcripts myself. I read the Constitution, the law itself, you yep. know, and I, that's what I'm encouraging people to do, that, you know, you can't really go by political pundits no matter what side they're on. You need right. to go to the facts and see the facts for yourself and think for yourself. And, you know, and I, and I don't talk about the oath, um, oath of a soldier. I mean, that's something that I mean, I've always defended the Constitution. I just made a mistake of believing a propaganda about it. 
Right. I mean, our, our top priority is to defend the Constitution. You know, right. that's, that's number one. Sure, right. you respect, you respect, you respect, respect um, you obey the laws of the president, but it doesn't say that you need to respect them or you need to be 100% loyal to them, them or her. You right. just but you defend the Constitution. That's the main important thing. So you see him in, in the, even in the memo, the transfer memo is clear. I, mean, I, I know I'm going a little bit outside what we're talking about. You're talking about the memo with the Ukrainians. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. I mean, it's, even with that, you can see that he's asking to turn off a political opponent. And I, mean, at least I know I'm going a little off base to what we're talking, talking right. about. Okay. But I'm just, but, um, just you know, trying to get people to think for themselves that you need, it, you, need to go, you need to go look at the actual concrete facts, not people's opinions on issue. Right, and so I, I just want to, yeah, good. I, I just wanted to highlight what, what I just heard you say, which is really important, and it relates to all, all the other cults that I've worked with, that they, the, the, the bad groups tend to take things out of context. Mm -hmm. And, yep. and whether it's a Bible verse or it's, you know, some, some opposition person, and then they build the story around something that actually was not the meaning of what, what was actually said or the context that it was given. So that, that it's very important also that what you said is don't believe pundits on the left right. or the right, think for yourself, Go right. to source documents whenever possible. Use your critical analytic mind and your common sense. Right, like common exactly. Sense really, it's like when I ask somebody, listen, uh, would you ever consider going into business, having a business partner with someone who lies most of the time? Would you ever consider doing business with a person like that? They would say, no, of course not. Because you can't trust that person if they have exactly. a track record of lying. So to just bring it onto a very basic principle level that having a relationship, whether it's a business relationship or you know, emotional relationship, you, it needs to be based on trust. And, and that trust has to be based on honesty and, you know, truthful disclosure. And, and I'm of the school, you know, because I was lied to by the women recruiting me into the Mooney's cult. You know, I'm, I, I, when, when I'm approached by any person or, or group about anything, my default position is if your group is so great, it should stand up to scrutiny. And I should mm -hmm. be able to ask very direct questions and get honest, you know, answers that are verifiable. Right. So if a group says, oh, no, we're not religious, and then we find out that they think the leader's the Messiah, and they bow to an altar like the cult that I was in, that's a lie. Exit. There's no right. explanation that you should listen to. It's based on lack of informed consent. Like get, you know, get out of there as soon as possible. And and so much of what I'm, you know, is is happening in the news is this kind of black and white, all or nothing, good versus evil mentality, where where people are being told, you know, trust us, some external authority figure, whether it's Fox News or Breitbart or or uh, or MSNBC or whatever, uh, trust us blindly instead of this is what we have. Here's the backup. Check right. it out for yourself, and you you decide what makes sense. And that's that's what's supposed to happen. That's you know real journalism. You know just laid out the facts, no biased opinion. Right. Um, but yeah, you don't really see much more of that these days. I mean, you, and both sides are kind of guilty of. Um, being biased and so the, the thing is what i've learned and I'm, I'm in a doctoral program now so i'm learning the rules of academia uh, to understand everyone has a bias but to state what your bias is so that it's not covert and also to have a dedication to the facts and to be fair about the facts. Being fair about the facts doesn't mean giving a falsehood e equal time. 
you know, if there's something right. like some someone was arrested for shoplifting, they were either arrested or they weren't arrested for shoplifting. You know, if if there's an excuse that they were, you know, they were seen by the guard incorrectly, that's different. But if there's a record of criminal activity, and I believe the, uh, President Trump just had a two million dollar fine for improper charity yeah. work. I mean, that's a factual thing in a court of law mm -hmm. uh, that anyone can read and see what the facts are of the case that, that he was accusing other people of operating charities and using it for self selfish purposes. But in fact, he was found guilty uh, of doing that. Um, I guess I want to ask you also um, your words of advice or wisdom going forward. Um, like, how do we end the polarization in your mind? How do we help people who are devout Trump believers come to come back to the Constitution, come back to you know a sense of of reality testing? Well, um, like I said, it's patience. In my um, show them the Constitution. Show them in what means in writing. Show them like this is what Trump did, you know, and show them the law. Show them the facts. Mm -hmm. Um, and you just gotta be patient. You know, some people are this way to keep and will not change, and then there are those who argue or not argue, but uh, will file along with you. So you just patience and you know just. Facts. And and tell me the the people who are also Trump, you know, diligent, fervent Trump supporters. They turned on you and they thought you were a traitor. Is that correct? Correct. So, because when I read about that, it just seemed like any other cult. You know, if you leave the Moonies, you're a traitor. You know, you've left God. You know, if you leave Scientology, mm -hmm. they make up bad things about you. And that's very culty, you know, instead of having a, an attitude of, hey, David's an adult, he can decide what he wants to do that makes him, you know, uh, feel, feel good about his life and what he believes. But no, you're treated as a, as a pariah, as an enemy, and such. Yeah, there's only been like a few handful of Trump uh, supporters that have been uh, uh, respectful, but not many. <laughs> Not many, but uh, and it's kind of funny. I, I mean, I even tell people, like, you know, take a look at my mentions by them. You know, you know, you can see in their comments. I mean, they some of them come up with the craziest stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them. So, so, do you find any more that people are trying to persuade you to come back to Trump's side? Uh, no. no, um, they many of them were saying, "Oh, I never was a supporter. Oh, I never was a Republican." They they try to discredit me, um, not necessarily trying to win me back over. So. Yeah, I actually was told that by, by a leader that I was never in the Moonies, even though I was there, there two you, and a half years yeah, held, there up, you go. held up by Moon personally as the model member at one point to the entire New York membership. Uh, and, and I just yeah. want to comment and say that in my deprogramming uh, uh, out of the Moonies, one of the pivotal documents that helped me was uh, Robert Lifton's book, Thought Reform, The Psychology of Totalism, which was his book about Chinese communist brainwashing. And, and in chapter 22 of that book, he outlined eight criteria by which any environment may be judged as brainwashing. And one of them is called dispensing of existence. And what it basically, that criteria basically says, if you believe, then you have a right to exist. If you don't believe, you have no such right. And therefore, you can be lied to, you can be you know, sued, you can be harmed. Yeah, wow. You're not a valid human being anymore if you're not in the group. Think. Yes, I can feel, and yes, I can Maya feels about Democrats, seems like. So, the, and, and my problem is anybody who's into a black and white, all or nothing mentality is, is problematic. And I think you yeah. some of my work and my influence continuum. I have a 
have a, a thing that's on my website about ethical influence versus unethical. I think we need to work within that ethical, you know, using your conscience, your analytic mind, you know, questioning, checks and balances, accountability, responsibility, um, and treating people as different than us and having a right to be different than us. And right, exactly. Choices than us, but ultimately to be obey the rule of law, which is what the Constitution says. Right, and, and that's a bipartisan thing. Exactly, exactly. So um, I wonder if there's anything else you might want to say as we wrap up. I really appreciate you being yourself, being out there, uh, being a, a beacon of hope for you know, hey, let's look at the facts, and you know, and it's not, it's not a, a, an issue to say, you know, what I believed what I believed based on what I knew then, and I've gotten new information and yeah. facts, and now I've changed my mind. Exactly, and it's exactly it. And I'm still an American, and I love America, mm -hmm. and I love the Constitution. Right. And, the and that, has, that hasn't changed. The yeah. office of the presidency deserves to be respected, but not, you know, giving... Uh, uh, not wor not worshipped. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so thank you very much, David, for, for and wish you uh, good luck, and we'll be in touch. And I'll, I'll put right. this up in a blog, and we'll get right. the message out a little bit bigger, I hope. Well, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Pleasure. Take care.